Mikey Jack, I want to. Mikey Jack. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a film and TV student, and for the past seven years I've been studying various types of film and TV production. Uh, currently, with uni work taking up a lot of my time, I've found it much harder to focus on games, so to try and delay the inevitable mental breakdown this work will cause me, I've decided to introduce a new type of video to my channel I'm going to call Just Useless Tutorials. Now, don't worry, if you're here for game reviews, I have some videos I'm working on, but if you have an interest in editing, then these videos may be for you. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use masking to make transitions. Before I start, I want to clarify you do not need high-end equipment for any of my tutorials. I mean, seriously, have you seen my setup? My camera doesn't even turn on 50% of the time, and this green screen was like £8 from eBay. Enough talking, let's get into the tutorial. To do this, you will need the following things. Here's some lovely examples as well of what you can do with the transitions. To start off with, you're going to want to get your camera and figure out what you want your transition to do. For example, I'm going to be using a door frame to jump between two locations in my house, so if you want to follow along you'll need two separate shots. You must make sure in your first shot something obstructs the view of the camera momentarily, for example a door frame. This is so the two clips fade into each other naturally when you mask them. When you're filming your first shot, you'll want to make sure the camera is as stable as possible because this will make your life so much easier when you get to editing. After you've got your first shot, you're going to want to go and try and get your second location and do the same thing. If you want your transition to be extremely smooth, make sure your camera's move in the same direction in both shots. Once you have your footage, then you're ready to edit. Get your footage uploaded to your computer and boot up After Effects. Now, if you're not familiar with the absolute basics of After Effects like how to create a new project, then pause this video and quickly check out one of the thousands of tutorials on YouTube. Now, to make this transition, we'll be using the pen tool and a little bit of keyframing. And before anyone says anything, yes I know you can track this, but it's just my preferred way of doing it, and it's a way that's worked best for me. Now it's time for the fun part. Editor, take it away. I'm losing the will to Hello, it is me, the editor. Uh, I'm going to try my best to run through how to edit this without it dragging on for too long and also without missing any details. So if you need to pause the video at any point, please feel free to do so. And if I'm not explaining stuff, watch the video as I will try and include it in the video if you want to follow along visually instead of audibly. So, first you want to bring the first shot you took into After Effects. If needed, you can trim it down. When dragging in your second shot, you need to make sure it's below the first shot in the timeline. This way, After Effects knows to keep it behind the first clip. With both clips in your timeline, you can now use the visibility icon to compare the shots. To make editing easier, you want to line up the clips so that they're passing the object at similar times. When you're happy that the shots are lined up, make sure your first clip is selected and then click the pen tool. With this, we're going to trace the outline of the object, or in this case, a doorway. This will be where the transition starts between the clips. To make things simple, try not to use too many points, especially if it's a straight line like the doorway that I'm using. Anything past that line in the frame needs to be selected using the pen tool, the whole idea being that you're selecting the area that will be replaced by your second shot. Once that's done, make sure you've connected back to your starting point with the pen tool, then make your way down to the mask menu and make sure that the inverted box is ticked. If you see a black square where one of the shots cut off, do not be alarmed, we'll fix that shortly. In the drop down menu for the mask you've made, you'll see several stopwatch icons. For this mask, we're wanting to keyframe the position, so we'll be clicking the stopwatch icon next to the mask path. What this does is every time we move the mask in a separate frame, it will animate the movement. With the pen tool still selected, you'll need to hold left shift and then individually left click on the squares on your mask, making them change from a solid square. Doing this means that the point can now be moved instead of moving the entire mask when you drag it. What we want to do is move the points to stay lined up with the end of the door frame each time we go a few frames forward. If you want your keyframes to be more accurate and detailed, you can go frame by frame, but if you want to keyframe faster, you can skip multiple frames like I'm doing here. Once you've finished keyframing, congratulations, you've done a rough transition, but now we can tidy it up a bit. 
By going back to where the second clip starts, use your pen tool to move the mask of the second clip off the screen. Once that's been done, all you need to do is go back down to your mask menu on the first clip and turn up the mask feather option until the two clips blend together and you can no longer see the line of the edges between each clip. And just like that, congratulations, you've done your first ever mask transition. With this method, really your creativity is the limit for what it can be used for and I think it's a neat little trick for making nice looking transitions. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, like it and share it around as it really helps get my videos out to people. If there's anything you want to see me talk about in future videos, please comment it down below and I'll try and make a tutorial for it. I hope maybe this video has been some use to you, and as always, I've been just useless, and I hope to see you next time. Farewell.